Hello everybody, it's Melissa from Melissa's Creations and today we're making this belly band card using the first frost stamp set. This card that you see on the screen right now is the first card that I made during a Facebook Live for my VIP group on Facebook and I really like how it turned out so I wanted to remake one for you. Today's video we're going to use Melon Mambo and Whisper White to create this card. So I have two pieces of standard cardstock. This is Melon Mambo 8.5 by 11 and I'm going to trim this down so that I can get two pieces that are four and a quarter by 11. Once you've cut that in half, we're going to rotate those pieces and score them at five and a half. On the stamp and trimmer, there is a scoring tool provided but if you don't have a stamp and trimmer that has an included scoring tool, I'm going to show you an alternate way that you can score your cardstock. You can not use the scoring tool if you don't have it, and you can use a bone folder. Just place it in the track of your trimmer, and you can score it that way. And now to cut our Whisper White piece, we're going to cut two long strips at two and a half inches. So that's two and a half by 11 inches. So I'm going to cut two of those, and that will give me enough cardstock left over to stamp and cut out my images for two cards. We're going to use the first frost bundle. And this includes the stamp set and the framelits dies. From the framelits dies, we're going to use several pieces. We're going to use the branch-like piece with the little berries on it. We're going to use the large flower as well as both of the small flowers. And I love that Stampin' Up! includes multiples of the smaller dies so that you can run them through the Big Shot in one pass. We're also going to include this guy, which I didn't use on the first card that I made, but I thought it was a nice addition to this card. We will be using one additional piece, and I will show you that later on. From the stamp set, we're going to use a couple pieces. So of course, we're going to use the large flower, as well as the small one. We're going to use I'm hesitating because I couldn't remember if we were going to use this piece or not, but we are. And then, of course, that little flower guy. And we're going to get our sentiment out later. So now I'm going to mount up my stamps, and I'm going to use two different color inks. We have the Granny Apple Green and the Melon Mambo. You can see the difference in the old style versus the new style pads there. My Melon Mambo ink is a little bit lighter. I don't have a re-inker and this pad is a little older so it's um, had some, some days but it still works really well even though it might be a little bit lighter than a new pad. I'm stamping enough images for two cards. So if you were just making one card, you would only need one large flower and two of the smaller flowers. But I want to get as much as I can out of this paper so I'm going to go ahead and do two at a time. Now to stamp this little um, bud, I'm going to use both of my ink pads and I'm going to stamp the stem only in the Granny Apple Green and then I'm going to use the Melon Mambo to ink up the bud. That way I can get two colors out of this one stamp. This is an alternate method if you don't have any markers, you can go ahead and use this method to get that variegation on your stamps. You could also use a sponge dauber to do the same thing. So we need two of these images per card. And last but not least, we're going to take that vine of leaves and it's okay that it hangs off the block because we really only need the top portion of this. The whole thing isn't going to go onto the card. 
So I'm stamping it off onto a scrap piece of paper where it overhangs and I'm just going to be cutting all of these shapes out on the Big Shot once I get them all cut out. And if you're making one card, you need three of these green pieces. Now we're going to do some stamping on our background cardstock. So these are the card bases that I cut earlier. And I'm going to get this background stamp out. And I just really like the way that it looks. I'm going to stamp two different styles. The first card that I'm going to stamp is kind of just going to show past the belly band. It's just going to be kind of uniform. And it's just a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. It's nothing. Um, too much. It's, it's just very subtle. The next card that I'm going to do, I'm actually going to stamp all over and I'm going to stamp off the edges so that it looks like the card was printed that way. So I'm just going to go all over and I'm using the same color ink, Melon Mambo, as the cardstock so that it gives me a subtle watercolor effect. And now it is Big Shot time. I have some of our glimmer paper here that I'm going to cut this little twig with berries. And you're going to need one of these per card. And I'm only showing you uh, one that I've cut out. I'm going to skip the second, the second one on camera. And I'm going to use my die brush to help me loosen that from the die. And it comes out really nice and easy that way. And now we're going to cut out all of our little pieces. I am using my magnetic platform for this piece and um, I can get quite a few on there without having to move around too much. However, if you have some issues getting those little dies to line up the way that you want them to, um, there is kind of a trick. You can sometimes take your magnetic plate and kind of drop it on your work surface on all four sides like I'm doing right there. Um, sometimes that will help and you need to do it with your dies as well to kind of repolarize them. It sounds interesting but it does work so I would recommend that if you have trouble with your magnetic plate you give that a try and see if it helps. Right, so here are my card bases. And here are my two belly bands with all of my pieces. And I've already separated them out into the two different card piles. So we're going to kind of do a different technique with our belly band on each card. So the first belly band that we're going to do, and you're going to want a piece of grid paper so that you can use it to line up your card and your belly band. So that you have a nice straight fold and it doesn't have to be a big piece as you see here you just need enough to line it up so I'm just making sure everything is square and on this one I'm just kind of going to use my bone folder to do a slight crease on either side of the card and I like this method because you don't have to measure anything and you can just really fold it around the card and you're done well, now I'm just going to give that a very light crease. I'm not pushing hard at all. I just want to get a general position. And you really want to make sure that your belly band isn't super tight around your card or else it won't slide on and off easily. So now I'm going to put my card back in to check the placement. And you might want to just fiddle with the edges a little bit just to make sure that you can get it looking nice and clean and square everything up and then once I have it the way I want it I kind of give a little bit more of a crease to that fold and that width right there is 
just a little bit larger than the width of your card. The next method I'm going to do for this card, I'm actually going to mark on the Whisper White belly band where the edges of the cardstock is. So instead of scoring it right on the table, I'm going to actually score it on my Stampin' Trimmer with the scoring blade. I'm going to take a pencil and line up just two little marks. That's all you need. And on the Stampin' Trimmer, I'm just going to slide my belly band into the track until that pencil mark is right where I want it in the track. And I'm going to give that a little score. And I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing. Line up that little mark in your track and score. And you can see that from that score line to the other score line, it should be just over four and a quarter, about four and three eighths. And once you have that, you can go ahead and fold and score that lightly. And this is really up to preference. It just depends on how you like to score your belly bands. Now if you see on the edge here, it's very faint, but my trimming blade is a little dull, so it leaves a little bit of a ridge. And to get rid of that, I just take my bone folder and flatten out the edges. I tried to erase my pencil marks, but my eraser was not very good, so it kind of made more of a smudge than anything else. So depending on what you use to mark your position, just be aware of how it will erase when you're done. But since it's on the inside, you really won't see it. I wasn't too concerned. Now I'm going to wrap it around my card, make sure the fit is good, and then I'm going to take some of our tear and tape adhesive. I'm going to put a strip on the outside here. And I'm also going to put a strip on the inside of the other flap. Make sure that you put them on the correct sides. Okay, make sure it's down nice and straight and flat, and then you can peel off the backing and stick it together. And I'm not pressing down very hard until I go to adhere it. You want to make sure that you see kind of an oval eye shape. You want to make sure that it's not too snug around your card. And you can test this by putting your card in and seeing how well it slides in and out. If you need to bend your card slightly to get it in, that's okay, as long as it lays flat when it's on the, a flat surface. And I'm going to do the same thing with this belly band that I scored on the table. And you do want to stamp your images first, probably. You'll see the difference between me stamping this flat versus me stamping the other belly band that I already assembled. I did have a little bit of trouble on the belly band that I already assembled. So um, I think if I would have put it onto my Stamparatus and held it down with my magnets, it would have given me a better result, but it still worked well enough. But I would recommend stamping before you assemble the belly band. So for this, I'm going to use a stamp set from, or stamp from this stamp set, First Frost. And this is wishing you all the best. I really like that we can use this stamp set all year round. It doesn't have to be for the winter season. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp on my already assembled belly band, and because it has a curve to it, it's a little difficult to get stamped down and have it look nice. It kind of bounces back on itself, and I don't know how well you can see, but it, it's just not as good as the first one, so definitely would recommend stamping before you glue it together. All right, so... On this step, I'm just going to kind of get my placement for all of my pieces. 
and you'll really be able to tell how I placed everything and then I'm going to speed up me gluing everything down. So I'm going to start with the glimmer paper piece and I'm going to put that kind of off to the right so it frames my sentiment a little. And then the green pieces are going to go down next. And you want to make sure that you don't overhang them to the left of the belly band. You want to keep to the right if you want this card to fit into a standard envelope. So I'm just kind of getting a rough idea of where I'd like everything to go when I get it all glued down. And then once you're happy with the placement, I just slide everything off and put a little bit of snail down so that I can start adhering. The snail is really for the base layer just to get a couple of those pieces stuck. And then I'm going to reinforce everything with glue dots and some dimensionals. You can trim these green pieces down a little bit more if you'd like, but since they're going to be hidden, I was okay with leaving them that length. Now I'm taking some of our silver metallic thread. I love this stuff. And I'm going to put the end on a glue dot, mini glue dot. And then I'm just going to coil it around until I have several loops. And I'm just sticking it onto that glue dot as I go. And I'm going to use my snips to snip off the end. When you do this, make sure that you're very careful. You only snip the end and you don't accidentally snip another loop. I kind of had a little mishap with one of them that I did. I'm going to take a second glue dot and layer it right on top to make sure that I hold all those pieces together. And I'm going to pick it up and place it right onto my belly band. Going to adhere these with glue dots and you're going to want to be mindful of the stem placement. You really want to make sure that you went to all that work to use two colors on these and you want to make sure that it shows a little. So um, mine's not going to show so just be aware of that when you're placing your flowers. So I used glue dots to put the first small flower down. I'm going to use one Stampin' Dimensional on the back of the larger flower. And then to really get some dimension, I'm going to pop up the last small flower with two dimensionals. And that will raise it up above everything else and just give it some really nice height. All right, now that our belly band is all decorated and beautiful, I'm going to slide it onto my card base. And at this point, you can stamp inside your card you can also cut a card mat and put it into the card so that you can stamp and write a sentiment on the inside. That is almost everything. I'm just going to add a few sequins just to dress it up a little bit more. I absolutely love these basic adhesive backed sequins. They are beautiful. You get a lot of different colors and I find myself using them more and more lately. And that's it. That is our card today. I really hope that you enjoyed this project. Let me know which one you prefer, this Melon Mambo and Granny Apple Green or the softer pink version. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. You can follow me online at melissascreations.com and facebook.com slash mcreations and on my social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest at mcreations. Thanks so much.